Thomas? You seem particularly triggered right now. Can you tell me what happened? I've had dreams that weren't just dreams. Am I crazy? We don't use that word in here. If you want the truth, Neo, you're going to have to follow me. The only thing that matters to you is still here. I know it's why you're still fighting and why you will never give up. You don't know me. No? After all these years, to be going back to where it all started. Back to the Matrix. Welcome back to The Matrix, everyone. What year is it? This is gonna be my Matrix Resurrections trailer breakdown. So obviously there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and familiar stuff. A bunch of the cast from the original Matrix trilogy is back for this, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll do videos for this when the movie comes out later this year. It'll be coming out around the time that Spider-Man No Way Home is hitting theaters. So it'll be a really big Christmas and holiday season this year but I'll just start at the beginning of the trailer footage and work our way through shot by shot. There's not a ton of dialogue in this and I feel like they don't need it because I feel like the Janis Joplin White Rabbit song does most of the work and there is a little bit of dialogue, just enough to give you clues about who some of these characters are, especially the whole Morpheus twist of it all. Everybody wondering why Lawrence Fishburne said that he was not a part of this movie. Like, oh, oh, I get it now. The title of the movie is all about resurrections. There's this theme of reincarnation inside the Matrix movies that they talk about during the original trilogy, the reincarnation of the one, Neo. So a lot of these other characters are playing younger versions of the other characters who are reincarnations of the other characters. But the way they start the trailer is a much older version of Neo who's been put back into the Matrix because the last we saw of him in Matrix Revolutions after he defeated Agent Smith, after he defeated all the Smiths, he looked like he actually died sacrificing himself at Machine City. Thus began the truce between the machines and the people, just like this loose peace that they had. And it was just this hanging idea that they would have this truce that would exist for however long it could exist with the Oracle and the Architect just sort of arguing with each other about how long it could possibly exist. Presumably that piece is going to end during the Matrix Resurrections, but the way they're kind of playing it here is that there's been another cycle of Zion and all the characters that did not get put back into the Matrix that aren't the older versions of themselves from the previous trilogy, like the actors that came back, the younger versions are the ones who were reincarnated, so to speak, rebooted in a new cycle of Zion. So it just seems like that's why some of them are younger, but not other ones. And the way the architect later explained it is that Neo was just the latest in a long line of reincarnations of this one, and he just happened to look like this. So theoretically, when Neo died, another person would become the one and be reincarnated and they would look different. So I'm assuming what they're saying here in the fact that Keanu Reeves is much older during this movie, Neo looks much older, even though they call him Thomas because he's back in the Matrix, is that he did not die at the end of Matrix Revolutions. The machines just plugged him back into the matrix and then just started dosing him up, quote unquote, with the blue pills, even though they have this big metaphor for the blue pill inside the trailer. Like they're over medicating him so that he won't remember that he is the one. Something happened to his memory and the memory of some of the other people to make them forget. Like it seems like Trinity also does not know that she is part of this group of people. They were somehow put back into the matrix and made to forget what had happened. But the trailer basically starts with him in a therapy session with Neil Patrick Harris, who seems like he's either a program or he's an agent. There's a couple characters in here I'm wondering if they're the architect. Like Jonathan Groff looks like he's an agent, but he could also be another version of the architect as well. Because there's a whole other younger version of the Oracle in this as well. Like you see the glasses. Oh, clearly she's meant to be another version of the Oracle. While he's in the therapy session, you start to see all the familiar triggers, like he notices glitches in the Matrix, so to speak. He notices the black cat that they explained to him, oh, you saw it twice, that's because it's a glitch in the matrix, sometimes those happen. When he talks about the dreams that he's had that seem very real, it sounds like he's remembering the events of the original trilogy. The way they cut the trailer I think is kind of misleading, like he's not remembering all this matrix code around him talking about the dreams, this is something from later in the movie. 
then there's a whole bunch of flashes with an agent trying to shoot him, him stopping time, and then they flash to the real world inside Machine City with a bunch of machines inspecting his body. And it seems like this is meant to be, and it seems like they're trying to imply that this is his body in present day, like they still have his body and this is what it looked like ever since the events of Matrix Revolutions. Like they just kept it, they never gave it back to the people of Zion after they finished their mission. You see a bunch of smaller machine spiders and what seems like the younger version of Morpheus attacking. A bunch of flashes and then Neo in present day waking back up just like he woke up in the original Matrix movie inside the real world like wait a minute what's going on here? I also love the way that Neil Patrick Harris's character says we don't use that word in here crazy talking about inside the Matrix obviously because he's either a program or an agent. Then you see him during a day inside the Matrix going through his paces with a bunch of familiar easter eggs and the whole theme of the Janis Joplin White Rabbit song reminding you of the White Rabbit during the original movie. Follow the White Rabbit as they told him. Real big Alice in Wonderland allegory about him following the White Rabbit down the hole to learn the truth about what was going on inside the Matrix. We see him meet Trinity. You kind of see the events of the trailer play out similar to the plot of the original Matrix movie. Like first he feels like something is weird, something isn't quite right about his life. Then he meets Trinity inside the Matrix. Obviously the context was very different during the original film. But here it seems like Trinity also does not realize yet that she is inside the Matrix again. She experiences a version of deja vu which they say is kind of like a glitch in the Matrix. Have we met before? Oh yes, of course. You see him downing all those prescription blue pills, clearly something the machines are giving him to manipulate his memory so that he will not remember everything that's happened. Because he's probably the most dangerous person on the planet to them, of course they will want to keep the truth from him about who he really is and what his abilities are. The whole thing with everybody in the elevator staring at their phone screens is also meant to be a metaphor for modern day culture and how everyone, so to speak, is kind of trapped in a version of the Matrix. It's a very obvious metaphor that they're going for here. Where you see Neo is the only person who's actually looking up. Everybody's eyes are stuck on their screens. You see another Alice in Wonderland book with a depiction of the white rabbit and it belongs to this younger version of the Oracle who just smiles at him. You see him stare into the mirror. This is obviously from later in the film where he sort of sees different depictions of himself like a much older different looking version of himself. I think this is also meant to look like a previous version of the one like he's a reincarnation of the one. So this might be one of the previous versions of the one looked like. And if you weren't sure about him playing a version of young Morpheus, I feel like this scene here is just so iconic for Lawrence Fishburne's version of Morpheus in the first film that this has to be Morpheus. When he says time to fly, obviously that's a reference to him flying during the events of the first film. That was basically the ending of the first film with him fully coming into his power, then taking off flying before they slammed to the end credits. I'm not sure which character Jessica Henwick is playing. She might be a reincarnation of one of the other characters or she could be a totally new character but she also has the white rabbit tattoo. This seems like her taking him to that meeting with Morpheus. Then they have the same iconic scene of them fighting kung fu style. I know kung fu. The twist being Neo doesn't quite yet know who he is at this point but he still does know kung fu pretty well like he doesn't understand what's going on but just stops him short and then unleashes his power in this explosion of energy and light. So it just seems like the process of him shaking the effect of the drugs that the machines have been giving him for all these years making him forget that he is the one. This scene will seem very familiar. It's right out of the first film. It's them showing you the wide shot when he's explaining to Neo how humans are being grown to be batteries. The whole idea at the end of the Matrix Revolutions though is that they didn't actually stop the machines completely. They just came to a truce. So machines continued to harvest humans. It's just that they didn't destroy Zion. They left Zion alone. That was the truce. This is them traveling through the depths of the original human civilization like they did during the first movie when they were traveling to Zion. Neo and Trinity on top of a high rise while they're inside the Matrix seeming like they're still kind of coming to the realization about who they really are, what their relationship is, how they know each other. This seems like it's happening relatively early in the movie when Jessica Henwick's character is first trying to help Neo learn the truth. You see a bunch of agents hijacking normal people inside the Matrix like they did during the original movie. It's a little too blurry to see who it is that's pointing the gun at Neo during this scene here but it seems like it's him still realizing who he is. This just seems like one of the big action set pieces from the movie on a train. Them on a train running from the agents. The whole idea of the train inside the Matrix in the original movies is that there was a subway train, a special one, that would take them outside and into the Matrix if they wanted. The Merovingian controlled the train that could take them outside or into the Matrix. And I believe that the Merovingian from the original movies is back for this movie as well too. This seems like a shot of Trinity either coming out of or just inside the Matrix while she's still plugged in. A couple really big action set pieces after they've started to learn about who they really are, what their powers are. 
I'm also wondering if this scene of what seems like young Morpheus is him starting to awaken for the first time again, like they'll also show him waking back up inside the Matrix at some point, or how he originally woke up inside the Matrix. We don't get a ton of his origin story during the original trilogy, but he does narrate a lot of his life and his history before the events of the first film. Speaking of his history, I believe Jada Pinkett Smith is also back for this movie as well too. The big hotel fight here will obviously remind you of the end of the first movie. A lot of these different action scenes very similar to big action set pieces from the original trilogy, especially that first film like him stopping all the bullets here with Trinity. Also all the big action set pieces on the rooftop, like many of the iconic rooftop fight scenes from the first film. Them jumping off the high rise together also reminds you of the first time that he tried to use his powers so to speak. When they're trying to train him he jumps off, fails, and just bounces off the ground. And it's a way of teaching him how the physics of the Matrix works, like oh if you die in the Matrix you die in real life. And the reason why I think that Jonathan Groff might be playing a version of the architect here is because of the chairs that they're sitting in. Do these chairs that they're both sitting in not remind you of the chairs that the architect sat in in the original movies? Also his speech patterns don't seem like a traditional agent's speech patterns. So remember the title of the movie, the theme of resurrection, the idea that people are resurrected with these different cycles that they go through in the war against the machines. The whole cycle of Zion that they tried to break with the Matrix Revolutions movie. Everybody let me know in the comments what you think of this. It looks like it's going to be pretty badass, but if you spotted any really big easter eggs in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. I've got a couple other big videos that I'm working on, so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my full Shang-Chi movie post credit scene video, and click here for my full Marvel What If episode 5 video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.